We will talk about internationalization of higher education, what this means for teachers in terms of their teaching and also for students in terms of challenges as well as opportunities. With me I have Mary Helstein, a researcher of internationalization in higher education, and we have read her chapter which is called Researching International Pedagogy and the Forming of New Academic Identities in the book Researching International Pedagogies. Mary, what is this chapter about? Well, um, the chapter is about um, embarking on a field of looking at internationalization um, and its relevance for teaching and learning in terms of pedagogy. Um, and and um, the chapter in particular is um, addressing um, uh, student um, transitions, international student transitions into the new teaching and learning areas um, and um, it involves the first six to twelve months of um, international students entering into a new learning environment in their host institutions um, and um, how students settle in, how they learn to uh, negotiate and learn to navigate the new um, areas and, and, and new fields um, in, in, the, in the environments in which they find themselves as international students. Yes, because it, it can be a rather daunting perhaps experience uh, when you arrive in a new country and you realise that uh, your knowledge of what it is like to be an international student is not actually the same as in your kind of host country. Uh, and you have researched uh, students in Australia mainly um, and you have several quotations in your, in your chapter that I find very interesting. That there is a specifically one that I am reminded of when, when I was actually an, an international student myself of how uh, it's not that easy to be the person constantly taking initiative uh, into the new mm. environment. Mm. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Mm -hmm. Well, what we're finding when we um, look at uh, transition experiences of first year uh, students transitioning into from, for example, high school into university is that um, it can be a little bit unsettling. Um, learning new environments, you have to learn, find your way. You also have to find your place in a new culture. Uh, but when you add an international experience onto that, um, that is, when you, when you transit, as it were, from one country to a new country and a new environment, um, you also learn, have to learn to negotiate cultures and perhaps in a foreign language, but you also have to learn to find your way um, not only in academic uh, environments, but also perhaps find your way in a new city, in a new place, uh, and it can be rather unsettling. Um, at least initially in the first, uh, in the first uh, few months of your, of your study period. I, we have interviewed a, a student, Victoria, and I thought we will listen to her experience of, of challenges of what it means to be an international student. Mm -hmm. I guess adapting myself to yeah, adapting myself to the program because um, I don't know. I did not have any specific expectations because I never, I never, I've never known how is Swedish educational system different from other places. But I realized that it was, and uh, uh, here students, I think they have a lot more flexibility and freedom in their learning. So they're much more responsible for their own learning than, for example, in my country in Russia. So it was difficult for me. I felt a little bit at a loss at the beginning and uh, yeah, I, get, I guess I expected more, more specific guidelines from the professors, so, so, but, but then I realized that I had to take matters into my own hands and that's what I did. And so that was a very, a, a very big difference to which the biggest difference I had to adjust myself to. I've had some years between my bachelor and my master, so I was for some time out of the academic environment and suddenly I was plunged into words like epistemology, ontology uh, and whatnot. And it was a little bit hard for me at the beginning, 
But then again, the Swedes who came there to practice uh, Russian to this prox student, uh, they told me that, guess what? This is how the Swedish education system is. Most of the programs are very academic, are very abstract. And then you learn mostly the practicalities and you get hands-on experience when you already start working. So that was, it was nice to hear it from a Swedish student, a number of Swedish students actually. Uh, I was like, okay, now I know. Now I know that this is what I have to um, get used to. So she, she, she brings up several important things that I think it's important to keep in mind mm. as mm. a university teacher. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it's about her expectations mm. uh, in regard to what to expect when being a student. Mm. But she also brings up this uh, importance of uh, uh, getting in contact with Swedish students and getting their confirmation of that her initial reaction to uh, this environment is not wrong in mm. any way. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that her kind of analysis of, of uh, what, what is expected of her as mm. a student also, it differs and that's okay. So she knows then what to adapt to. Mm -hmm. How does this re resonate with your research? Well, um, it, it actually, she speaks um, right, right from the research findings that, uh, that uh, uh, we have um, found over the years. Um, we've interviewed um, hundreds of international students um, uh, in, in many, many different countries and traveling across and being international students in many, many different countries. And what we're finding um, repeatedly, if you, if you like, is, is, and consistently, is that international students are really quite resourceful. We tend to uh, perhaps think that um, because of international students being a little bit unsettled and, and, and um, finding themselves in a, in, an, in a strange place, that they might not be able to be resourceful. But we're finding through our research that on the contrary, international students are very effective in finding their place and and it is almost as though um, they are making use of all the resources that they have um, at, uh, at their fingertips to settle in quickly and to learn the new ways of the, the host institution and, and, and the learning environment. Yes, in, in your chapter you talk about the importance of making a meaningful transition into this new uh, environment and I'm wondering so how how can we as teachers facilitate that transition to be meaningful mm. um, and uh, through our research in interviewing and, and, and talking to a lot of teacher scholars uh, we're also finding that um, teachers who are um, engaging who are open who have um, who take an open stance towards um, meeting international students and and also um, I guess it might start from just being aware that there are international students in your classroom that not everyone sitting in your classroom might um, perhaps follow everything that is being um, instructed and, and, and said in following the discourse for example so just starting by being aware that there is diversity in our classrooms and then perhaps um, starting a dialogue with the student cohort about um, those issues, checking, back checking um, whether students understand what you're, what, um, you're wanting to say in, in your instructions and so on. So just initial awareness goes a long way towards uh, meeting uh, the, the uh, distance between uh, teachers and students and narrowing it down to something very workable. Yes, because I think uh, a lot of teachers experience some challenges in relation to uh, having international students. Even if they are where they are there, they don't know exactly how to deal with these challenges. Mm. And, and um, we have interviewed two teachers who uh, have experience from an international classroom about their challenges, which we're going to listen to. I think the major challenges are in terms of getting 
to know the cultural differences and the expectations that students, uh, the students come with. Uh, studying in Sweden and studying in other countries doesn't always mean the same thing in terms of student participation, uh, in terms of um, interaction, in terms of contact with the teacher, and so on. So I think setting the scene in that sense um, is one of the major challenges. Um, another one that has been put forward by other people as well is the language aspect, that we all assume that we speak and write English uh, sufficiently well. I think the challenges uh, are the same challenges that we face with local students. We need to be very clear about the requirements to, that, that the students have when taking our course. We need to be very clear in laying down the rules and we have to manage the expectation of the students from minute one. As long as the rules are clear, as long as they're reasonable, I don't think the, the fact that our students may come from different countries is going to be uh, a problem. That there, I don't think there are special challenges with that. And emphasizing things like the need to address cultural differences is something that as long as we do what we need to do, that is being clear, reasonable, and transparent, and as long as this is done, cultural differences shouldn't be playing a role. Yes, they, they bring up, uh, I think, two or three very important aspects of uh, the challenges uh, involved. And one is, is this issue of, of expectations on flexibility and, and participation on the terms of students. That uh, we think, as teachers, that we can expect the same kind of engagement uh, no matter where people are from, but uh, the traditions in terms of, of students' experiences on how much you, you participate in student activating things mm -hmm. uh, is perhaps uh, differ. Mm -hmm. How do you think that we, we as teachers could handle this? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> part, and this, this again resonates in the, in the research, on international teaching and learning. We're finding uh, results by many researchers uh, researching the field um, in, for example, classroom interactions, um, where um, one of the things that international teacher scholars um, might, might, excuse me, <coughs> might, might adopt um, are um, being a little bit more uh, perhaps um, active in in inviting students to participate in inviting um, certain students that would be expected to perhaps uh, take a more passive role in the classroom to actually uh, deliberately invite them to express their opinions and and to give their views on in discussions and so forth. Um, so that, that, that's one simple example that, uh, that you can adopt um, to your teaching practice. Yes. Uh, the, the other thing that uh, the second teacher here, Inyaki, brings up is that perhaps we don't need to do anything. It's, uh, it's all about trying to be very explicit on uh, your expectations, on, on what are the kind of rules of, of the class, uh, that you make like an agreement with the students from the very beginning, uh, how does that resonate with you? Mm. And we're finding um, that this, uh, again, um, is, uh, shows and, and supports the research findings in the field. Um, the issues, and, and certainly teachers need to be clear and transparent, um, and, and I guess that uh, perhaps could be part of good teaching as well, uh, not just for international students, but, but good teaching in general. Um, so being transparent about the, the rules and, and the expectations. But when it comes to international teaching and learning, we need to be a little bit more explicit, I guess, um, in explaining what is meant by expectations. Perhaps revealing the hidden curriculum a, li a little bit. What, what do I mean when I say 
um, that um, students should be prepared. What does that preparation actually mean in detail? Does it mean just reading the readings or does it mean also uh, doing additional things, um, rehearsing some and, and perhaps um, preparing some questions and, and so on. So being particularly explicit with our expectations um, on, in teaching and learning might be a start. Yeah, yeah well, we will listen again to uh, Tore here, the first teacher, and, and how, uh, what kind of strategies he uses in, in his uh, teaching. Expectations on the course. Um, not necessarily from the point of view of the expected learning outcomes, because they are sort of rather technical and they are content oriented, but I ask students about um, how much interaction do you think there will be in this course? Um, w would it be okay for you to write me an email and ask me something about something that you haven't understood? Would you be prepared to do that? Uh, some students react to these questions directly and say, okay, can I really do that? Would you answer such an email? Well, what do you think would be my question back? So having a discussion based on shared assumptions, as it were, I find is one way of, of um, shall we say, releasing this potential pressure that you get. International students are often uh, very well, shall we say, prepared when it comes to writing extended text, but they're not always um, that familiar with getting peer feedback because it's something you don't do always. Sometimes they know, but sometimes they don't. Um, so it's a question also of, shall we say, meta-teaching a process of what it means to learn in such a context where we actually meet and, and discuss. So that, that's, that's one thing that I've found is, is quite helpful. Uh, also, when it, when it comes to language use, um, just to point out, very simple, uh, to point out that this is not a language proficiency course. He brings up this with language again, which he also spoke about before. Uh, and I think uh, this is something that as, as a teacher, you're always very aware of who is uh, very good at communicating uh, in, if it's English or Swedish or any other language. Uh, and you tend to perhaps uh, pick uh, those students for interacting in the classroom. And I'm wondering, what, how can we do this? Because obviously this would also actually neglect some students and make them perhaps feel excluded. Um, so what can we do? What is your advice in relation to this language issue? And, and certainly language is, is perhaps one of the, the um, most obvious uh, components of being an international student. Many international students travel to learn language, so, so that, it, that is uh, certainly important. And, and if we <coughs> bring that into the classroom situation, then um, allowing all, excuse me, <coughs> allowing all students to, um, to um, practice, to give them enough opportunities in the, in, in the seminar or in the discussion to voice their opinions. Um, also uh, to voice their opinions in culturally appropriate ways um, so and which which taps into that um, uh, conversational style the cultures of conversa the conversational styles that are very different in different parts of the world so for teachers to um, tap into that and 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 uh, being cognizant about uh, the cultural differences and perhaps um, allowing some students to um, come into come into those discussions um, in 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 gentle and situated ways. Yes. So, uh, you, in, in your chapter, you also talk about uh, the importance of actually finding out more about the students. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, well, part of teacher engagement, we, we often talk about teacher engagement um, and, and good teaching uh, being, being part of, or, or engagement being part of good teaching. Um, and in the international 
education context, uh, engagement involves um, getting to know your international students. That might mean uh, doing simple things such as checking uh, which languages um, you might have in your student cohort and learning how to say hello in, in particular languages or it might uh, involve, as uh, Ture mentions there, being available for contact because not all cultures have that expectation of always being um, available to students and, and being conversational in dialogue with students. So being very clear about your intentions, but also perhaps explaining cultural ways of, of uh, conversing in international contexts. So in one way you mean that uh, we need to actually also take a, a step back and see ourselves from the outside and try to put ourselves in, in the international student's shoes and perhaps look at what could be uh, a bit strange or um, when, when it comes to the Swedish culture. And obviously that's easier if you have been abroad somewhere for a longer um, time yourself. Uh, but is, is that what you mean? Certainly, um, and, and um, I guess uh, with experience, uh, the more experience we have, the easier things tend to, tend to be. But when it comes to international travel, that isn't always the case, we, because we are always confronted with new ways of, of uh, acting and, and uh, behaving. Um, so for teachers, the important thing uh, which uh, we are finding through our research as well is uh, to be um, reflective perhaps of the intercultural teaching and learning um, agendas that that you might be transmitting through your your teaching style. Okay well thank you very much for coming uh, to summarize what we have discussed to, as to be a university teacher you need to be aware and you need to be aware of the different kind of cultural backgrounds that exist in your classroom and to facilitate this internationalization process of our international classrooms in higher education we also need to be more explicit on what we are doing and why we are doing them thank you Thank you.